There's no doubt that living and working in the middle of the ocean on any military vessel can result in a lot of stress and frustration. The vast majority of the U.S. Navy sailors spend most of their time on an aircraft carrier in the open sea. Fortunately, United States Navy commanders have come up with a unique and, if not slightly dangerous way for these sailors to get a well-deserved time for relaxation. These are known as swim calls. Crew members on board are given the opportunity to swim in the open sea as a fun activity while the aircraft carrier is stationary. A specific area is designated for the individuals where they can enter the water and enjoy a nice swim. Although swim calls are fun, there are specific safety precautions that the Navy has made necessary to follow for the protection of the crew members, like lifeguards and safety boats patrolling to look out for any potential target. The first thought that comes to the majority of people's minds when entering or even thinking about stepping into the open sea is the fear of sharks. But why are they considered a threat, and what makes them so dangerous? Sharks have a history of being involved in shipwrecks and playing a part in sinking vessels. For example, on the 12th of November 1943, the Cape San Juan, a U.S. freighter and personal transport ship, was attacked and downed by the Japanese near the Fiji Islands. It was reported that almost 700 people died trying to fight off sharks. This is why crew members are required to complete water training. Sailors need to learn how to save themselves and their colleagues in case their vessels crash and go down underwater, so they aren't stuck in their sunken ships. These drills are held in situations that are to be faced in the open seas. This includes heavy waves, rain, and low visibility. Furthermore, these shallow water drills teach the crew how to keep their composure and use their emergency equipment to safely and quickly escape the situation. Although the chances of shark attacks are rare, there's still a security team hired for these Navy men. This team looks out for sharks and other sea predators which can cause harm to the swimmers, and then they eliminate them. These teams are important because sharks are attracted to noise and swim calls often occur alongside dancing, music, and lots of jumping in and out of the ocean. Although the U.S. Coast Guard does not necessarily consider sharks a very dangerous threat to themselves, they are aware of the threats that they pose to surfers and swimmers. These security teams are essential for the protection of civilians in dangerous waters. For example, a man was bitten by a shark near the Bahamas, and the rescue team was called in to help. A Coast Guard Air Station Miami MH-65 Dolphin helicopter with its crew arrived at the scene and took the man to the nearest hospital in Miami. The man was saved and fully recovered due to the swiftness of the U.S. Coast Guard. Even though knowing the casualties sharks can cause, the U.S. Navy has also taken several steps to minimize the impact their operations have on all of the ocean life as the ocean ecosystem is vital to our planet. The military has initiated the Maritime Mammal Observing Unit, or MIMOU. Now, the MIMOU is given the task of studying the impact of their operations on aquatic life. They would often look for any animals that might have been negatively affected during their missions and exercises, so that they could suggest to the military to abort whatever it's doing until they can make sure that the situation is safe again. The Navy's concern for marine life goes beyond avoiding an ecological calamity. Over the years, the MMIOU has trained and employed marine mammals like dolphins and sea lions for an array of different tasks. The most common of them is detecting underwater objects, such as mines or enemy divers. These mammals are trained to use their underwater hearing abilities to locate all sorts of danger. These animals prove to be helpful for both military and security purposes. Upon discovering an unfamiliar object, the dolphin or sea lion will fix a marker or flag on them and bring them back to their handlers for inspection. Underwater mines are major threats as they're not only designed to stay in the water for years, but are unable to distinguish between the Navy ships and civilian ships. This means that the lives of civilians can be at risk if these mines are not identified and gotten rid of. Not to mention the dangers of these mines to aquatic life. Mines that were deployed way back in the World War II era are also able to cause significant damage. However, due to their long-life presence under the sea, they're difficult to locate as they're covered with underwater plants and are often overgrown. This is why the military has animals like dolphins to help them. It's a lot safer for these underwater creatures to spot and identify these objects in hard places. 
Once they come across a suspicious object, the animal will then hit a paddle on the boat. Its trainer will then provide it with a flag or a marker that the dolphin or sea lion will put next to the object as a reminder for the sailor to come back and investigate it. Although these animals can locate and identify the hazards to the sailor, they're not capable enough to take them out by themselves. This is a job that requires precision and human expertise as it is extremely dangerous. This is where the men and women of Task Force 56 come into play. These Navy sailors operate in the Middle East, and among their several duties are coastal warfare, marine mammal protection, explosive ordnance disposal, and many more. Because of the many jobs Task Force 56 has to carry out, these soldiers undergo a lot of rigorous and extensive training sessions, both before and after their deployment in the Middle East. The crew given the responsibility of disposing of explosives is trained in various diving scenarios and conditions. Learning the physics of diving, pressure gas laws, and decompression tables are also required. Dive-related conditions are also studied, such as oxygen toxicity and decompression sickness. While all of this training seems difficult, the actual Task Force 56 mine response training is one tough job. It generally consists of exercises meant to mimic real-life situations and ordinances. These can be performed as a solo team or in joint teams with foreign military members. The Eager Lion exercise was carried out in 2019 in Aqaba, Jordan. U.S. and Canadian troops based in Jordan carried out a mine disposal drill designed to strengthen their real-life reaction times. In this scenario, an alert about the potential discovery of a mine is sent to the teams, at which point both a boat and a helicopter are deployed. The helicopter drops swimmers who attach an explosive to the mine and then are rescued quickly by the waiting fast boat. Upon reaching a safe distance, the explosive is detonated to neutralize the threat. Other units in Task Force 56 might be responsible for mine disposal, but most of their days are spent patrolling waters in small, fast-moving vessels. These vessels are usually very heavily armed and are quick enough to respond to any threat in a matter of minutes. The importance of these highly trained Navy troops is that, be it mines, sharks, or enemy boats, almost nothing gets past their watchful eyes. And that is the end of our video. If you enjoyed it, then please make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel and go ahead and click that notification bell as well. This way you never miss another one of our educational videos on marine life and the Navy. Thank you very much everybody for choosing to spend your time with us here today. We'll see you all in our very next video.